wake of the resignation of Lieutenant Colonel Taylor, the accusation she makes, what happened, what needs to change? Remember, this is coming at a time when the military is in deep crisis. Investigations into the former chief of the defense staff, General Jonathan Vance. An investigation into his replacement, Admiral Art McDonald. It's really unprecedented. Is the Department of Defense even properly set up to deal with these issues properly and help other members who want to come forward? Let's find out. Joining me now is the military ombudsman, Gregory Lick. Mr. Lick, first of all, thank you, and thanks for your service to the country. Um, I want to start with a stunning resignation letter that um, Lieutenant Colonel Eleanor Taylor wrote that Annie and I were just discussing, and she said she's sickened by the ongoing investigations. She wrote, the scope of the problem has yet to be exposed, implying it's much bigger. She says there's been a failure of senior leadership, that the military, I'm quoting her, lost all credibility, the breach of trust has been too much. Is her description accurate? Well, I think it's it, it's always sad to see a, a member resign uh, her commission in this case when they don't see anything changing. I think we owe our members much, much more than that. And I, when I read the last part of our letter this morning, I really strongly support her that we need to seize this opportunity that's now before us to affect change. Every one of us, not just me, but everyone in the whole military and the whole department. We need to get it right this time. And let's not wait any longer. But if someone of her accomplishment, how high she she went in the military, if she says, we don't, I don't believe it's going to be different, I, I, the only recourse I have now is to quit, what message does that send about not only this current system, but her belief in the possibility of change? Well, I, I think I think she did have some positive aspects in her in her letter, and in that regard, we, as I said, we have this opportunity now. And in my view, the one important element in this, and I think I got it from her letter too as well, quite strongly, is that members need to have the confidence and comfort level to come forward. That is the major issue right now, and that their allegations will be addressed properly, and they will receive fair treatment. There will be no reprisal. And for that, I truly, truly believe that it needs a completely independent body, investigative body to do that, reporting to Parliament. Absolutely, that is what we need. Okay, I, I, I want to get to that, uh, because you're now calling for, you need in a an, in truly independent uh, body. Um, because there's, first of all, your office, the Ombudsman, you want more independence. Is your office not independent enough, and what would you need for it to be totally independent? Well, certainly, uh, certainly we're independent from the chain of command at present, but we still report to a minister. And therefore, there are sometimes vested interests, sometimes, in order for us to really truly give our members what they need in terms of confidence and comfort level to come forward, they need to be ensured that all of Canadians, uh, as represented by Parliament, can make sure that their particular allegations or problems within the military are investigated properly and completely independently, completely independently. In other words, you shouldn't report to the minister. You should report directly to Parliament. Is that what you're saying? Independent funding, uh totally independent, and report to Parliament, not report to the minister. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. I think because I look at it as what, what do Canadians deserve? What do members of the military in this case deserve to as well? They deserve for that an independent body like myself reporting to Parliament where all of Canadians represented by Parliament get their, get their problems addressed, not, not through the ruling party. I just want to ask you another question about that, um, because you said we need a place where people feel comfortable coming forward, and you believe that means a truly independent oversight body for the military. But I've talked to Minister Sajjan about that, and he says, for example, he says um, the Canadian Forces National Investigation Service or the Defense Department's Sexual Misconduct Response Center. Are those independent enough, or do those suffer from the same problem your office suffers from? 
I don't think they're independent enough. And I think uh, the main reason is that there are obviously some very talented, very professional, very uh, good experts in investigation in those particular organizations. But they still suffer from the perception, even if it's even if it's not real, but the real perception of members who don't have a confidence level and a comfort level that they'll get addressed right. because they do report through the chain of command in some way or another. So it's really we have to remember it is about the members comfort and confidence level to come forward, not simply because we say somebody is independent. I, I want to go back to um, allegations against General Vance, the former chief of the defense staff. Um, Minister Sajjan said it was not his job to act on the allegation of misconduct. And the previous ombudsman, the person you replaced, Mr. Walborn, brought to him in 2018. He, Mr. Sajjan said, it's the ombudsman's job. Whose job is it? If an ombudsman receives a complaint of sexual misconduct about a senior officer, what is the process? Because the minister said, it ain't my job. So let's be very clear on this. My office presently, presently, has absolutely no authority to look into criminal matters or offenses that fall under the military's code of service discipline. Sexual assault is a criminal matter. Sexual misconduct may be an offense under the Code of Service Discipline. The military justice system is obviously complex. You know, there are lots of many, many experts out there that could give better insight into the jurisdiction of other organizations. What I can tell you, though, is that my office is one of two redress mechanisms that exist outside the chain of command. The other deals exclusively with complaints against the military police. But regardless of that, whether if, if an allegation comes to me as ombudsman or to my office as ombudsman, regardless of the subject. Right. There could be no investigation where a member is not willing to come forward or consent to an investigation. So if they fear reprisal or other career rep repercussions, they simply will not come forward. That's, that's, that's just what happens. So there's no automatic launch of an investigation after receiving an right. information type of thing. So, so, so yeah, go ahead, Evan. No, I'm just trying to understand it, because it doesn't seem like anybody, including members of the military, for whom this whole system is supposed to be set up for, really understand that. So if a complaint of sexual misconduct comes to the ombudsman, comes to you, about the senior ranks, what is the process then? Well, we, can, we will inform the member, as we do for almost any complaint, we will inform the member of the redress mechanisms available to you, available to them. Um, but in this particular case, obviously it involved the most senior member of the military. And the thing that we don't understand at present is what were the what were the members wishes in this regard? We've heard from my predecessor about uh, that. We've heard from a number, number of other people surmising about what those might be. But every complaint like this is guided, in fact, directed by the wishes of the member who's complaining. And so we'll, we'll inform them about the recourse mechanisms available to them, but they have to have the the comfort and confidence level to come forward to do to use them. And if they don't, right. which many of them don't at this point in time, then our job now, in this point in time, is to give them that comfort, comfort and confidence level to come forward. And I keep saying, and I will say it repeatedly, that's through legislative reform to make a, a, an independent group who's responsible right. for this reporting to Parliament. But, I, but until you get that independence, your predecessor brought this to Minister Sajjan and said, look, I can't give you the details because of confidentiality issues. Was, Mr. was Minister Sajjan right to say, I can't touch this, that would be political interference? Is your, in your understanding, is that right, that the Minister uh, of Defense will say, can't touch it, sorry? Well, I mean, I, I thought to myself, if this particular exact situation had come to me now as Ombudsman, I would have done the exact same thing as what my predecessor did. So I would have brought it to the attention of the person I report to and notified them of the important information, notified them of the, the member's wishes in this regard. Um, and if they didn't want their name released, I would keep that confidential, confidentiality absolute. Uh, and also advise them that there's nothing within my authority present that I could do in this regard other than informing the member of what recourse mechanisms were available to them. And I would be guided by the wishes of the member in any further action. Right. You, you realize that if you would do exactly what Mr. Walburn would do, and then therefore Mr. Sachin says he would do the exact same thing, 
it does not show the system is completely bust because it seemed like no one did anything and no one was accountable for anything. Isn't that right? Yeah. I, th I think that's right. I think that right now, even if it's even if it's the all of the um, uh, members' views right now or perceptions that it's broken, then it's broken, and they don't then have the confidence and comfort level to come forward. And so I keep saying it: we need, we have an opportunity now to fix it. Let's fix it. Mr. Lick, I really appreciate you taking the time on, on a critical issue. I know there's many men and women who are serving. Many of them want some justice and they want a place to go and they're looking for it. And I thank you for your time today and your service. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Evan.